Hello and welcome to tonight's Get In Tune. I'm Michael Gracia and I got a great guest. Now I know I told you guys last week we were going to have Evan Dorkin come on, but he had to reschedule due to uh, some work issues going on. Um, so I got a great guest and we were talking already backstage and and this guy's awesome. Uh, I've had I've already had a lot of fun talking with him. I know tonight's going to be a fantastic show. Um, so just to give you a little background for those who don't know about me, in addition to um, doing a lot of comic work, I'm a trained animator. Uh, animation is my passion. I love to talk animation, uh, cartoons, whatever it is, uh, programs. I don't care. I just love talking animation. So um, I was actually going to reach out to, to my guest for like June or July because I wanted to start bringing more indie animators on. And when Evan had to cancel, I saw he has a Kickstarter. I'm like, what a perfect time. So I reached out to him, and luckily, he was free tonight. So let me bring on the – he's an animator. He's a voice actor. He is the producer, the director, showrunner, and the creator of this great cartoon I've watched on YouTube called Chucky Chicken. So let me bring on Michael Cook. Well, that was a heck of an introduction. I don't think I can do any more than that. I mean, it was nice talking to you. No, 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 thank, thank you for coming, coming on. Well, no, thank you for having me. This is this is great. No, I, I'm really thankful you asked me. So, yeah. And we got uh, someone, Alex Acosta, saying, hi, Michael. How are you tonight? I don't know if that's for me or you or both of us, but I'm good. Hi. <laughs> Yeah, we, uh, so yeah, we got um, we got uh, yeah two mics here. So I don't know how you want to do this. Do you want to go? Well, I, I will say this: I actually do prefer to be called Michael. So okay. If you want to go by Mike, I go by Michael. That's how we'll know in the comments. I've been, I've been called Mike. I've been called Michael, MC, Mickey, Disney. Yeah. There's Cookie yeah. Monster, Cook, <laughs> Mike Cook, and you know, the Gambit. I have many aliases. I mean nicknames. So you know. <laughs> So, uh, again, thanks for coming on. And for those who, who are um, who are wondering who this fat guy is. Yeah. Oh, no, go ahead. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. No, 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 go ahead. <laughs> um, I've already put the link to, to Mike's Kickstarter in the uh, comments. So whether you're watching on Facebook, YouTube, or Twitch, um, you can click on the link and donate after you watch the show, please. Don't don't leave the show tonight because um, we're going to look at his Kickstarter um, and we're going to have a lot of fun. So hi, Judy. Hi. What's this? Uh, oh. Is it Belgu Belgugla Tunes? Belgu I oh, Beluga Tunes. Yeah. That's, Beluga Tunes. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, that's Andrew Mortimer. Good guy from all oh. the way from London, England. What up, Andrew? Thanks for, for, for yeah. watching at your time. He, yeah, he's one of my animators. <laughs> that's so. great. Yeah. Uh, right, rambling Rob. Howdy, Michaels. Howdy to you. Yeah, good. Um, before we even get started, I just want to tell you all the places you can find Michael. We'll be sh uh, scrolling throughout the bottom, throughout the entire interview here. And, um, you know, feel free to follow him on all the social medias. I, I, he'll enjoy it. You'll enjoy it. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's let's uh, get a, let's get started. Um, Let's get on with it. As, as you know, I always start my shows with asking about your background. Like, so usually I talk about comics, but before I even ask you how you got into animation, can you tell me your earliest earliest memory of watching some kind of cartoon? Like, what was it that was like, ooh, that's it? Oh my gosh! Yes, it was. Um... Mickey's Christmas Carol and the Prince and the Pauper were wow, the tough. two. Yeah, I mean, what a heck of an introduction, you know. And I remember I was, you know, drawing cartoons ever since I was like a wee little guy. And yeah. bless my mom's heart, like I would, I would take a piece of paper and I would put it up on the screen and try and trace Mickey Mouse like on the on the TV without pausing it like I'd just be frustrated and then she knew how to hit the pause button and I'm like oh thanks mom this is so much easier <laughs> can I can I tell you dude this is so cool because yeah. when I was a kid I used to record cartoons pause them mm -hmm. and draw from the TV I didn't put the paper up and trace 
yeah. but I would actually just look. And that's how I learned how to draw cartoon characters. I was using a light box when I was like three years old and not even knowing it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, say hi to Ted Hazard in the comments. Yo. Oh, Ted, what up, buddy? Yes, he is um, He is a voice actor. He is the voice of Freddy Fox on the show, which is great. great. I do want to give a shout out to my little sister, and uh, Danielle, and her friend Tom, who are watching the show. So hi, Danny. Oh. Hi, Tom. Hello, nice you guys. Nice to see you. Thank you for yeah. tuning in. Uh, so okay, so for you it was it was Mickey and uh, for Chris Cowell, Prince and the Pauper, which are both great, um, yeah. great animations. And so you were drawing from an early age since you can hold a pencil, basically. I assume. Oh, one hundred percent. Yeah. And I and I grew up in the '90s, so for me, I grew up in like the perfect time for animation because the Disney Channel was just coming out with shows like DuckTales, like the original DuckTales, not the yeah. not the new one, like the old one, they had Goof Troop, Nickelodeon mm. was doing his thing with Rugrats and Doug, I wasn't allowed to watch Ren and Stimpy, but you know, Cartoon Network was doing, oh my mom, she monitored the TV, like she's yeah. the original, original parental guidance. You know? <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's great that you had that, I mean, I grew up in the 80s, late 70s mm -hmm. and, and throughout the 80s, I remember the 90s cartoons. Yeah very fondly mm -hmm. um i loved what cartoon network was doing like like yeah. when cartoon network was coming out that's when i was starting to try to get in the industry yeah so, uh, that's really I, cool though yeah it was it was fun stuff fun stuff that came out of there and obviously you're a big disney guy um i've been told you've been told yeah <laughs> uh let, let me ask you since obviously for animation you're very much like me it seems I assume you've taken a trip or two to like Disney World or I've been very blessed. Um, I've been to both Disneyland and Walt Disney World. I worked at Disneyland for a little bit, which cool. was it was a trip. Let me tell yeah. you. I mean, they don't call it the happiest place on earth for nothing, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm I will forever say that Disneyland is the better of the two. Yeah, I don't care. You can you put me in the grave. Disneyland is better. Well, I will say this. I haven't had a chance to go out to Disneyland in all in my life. I'm, I'm hoping to do a trip in the next couple of years. Uh, living on the East Coast, it's easier to get down to Florida. Um, yeah. and, I, and I tend to make a trip, if not every year, every two years down there. So it's uh, – and I've had a lot of friends who have worked uh, at the – you know, for the company. It's, it's yeah. a really, really cool job. The closest I got to working for Disney was Disney Store back in my senior year of high school. I did too. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was a very fun job. Uh, I, I worked Disney Store during the holiday season of 2009. Yeah, 2000. No, 2007. 2007. Yeah, because that was I remember that that was right when I was starting college, and oh, Black Friday, forget it. Yeah, I did. I did yeah. about six or seven months in '94. Ooh. Um, yeah. But that was the good time to be in the Disney store, man. Like you had the good stores. I had the freaking child play store, <laughs> children's play store. You yeah, know? <laughs> yeah. We, we had we had plush mountain you have to put together every night. And... Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> I would have been Scrooge McDuck in it in those plushes. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we had uh, oh god, I, I remember I worked the collectibles section a lot just because I knew so much about it. What's your favorite? Do you do you have any of those collectibles? See, I'm interviewing you now. Do you, have um, any? you know what? I I don't have it in this room, mm -hmm. but I do have um, the Peter Pan snow globe. It was the it was the the sh Captain Hook ship. Yeah, and Peter Pan is in there. But I will show you this. I got two cool things here. Let me okay. just. My wife picked these up for me. Oh, I'm gonna have to stand. It's a little heavy. <laughs> Go for it. Now, my favorite Disney character mm -hmm. is Scrooge McDuck. So I got wow. a snow globe that I love, and that's cool. If I can find where the other one is in here, I don't know where I put it. Um, um, I know it's in the studio here. I haven't taken it out. Uh, huh, that's weird. Um. I do have a Darkwing Duck one somewhere in here. Okay. Um, and just to give you a little uh, show right back, there's my little Disney nice shelf up there. Although Dino from is on there, but I have oh, the yeah. original Mickey Mouse uh, Sorcerer Mickey Mask from a Halloween costume. <laughs> that that's both amazing and creepy. creepy and amazing. I got uh, Scrooge as well. 
Nice. <laughs> Very cool. We got some, I, I got some fun stuff in my studio here. I'm still decorating mine, so we'll <laughs> we'll get there. So, um, but it. Sorry, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say, you know, a lot of people, uh, you know, I've been getting some messages. Get to the chicken already. So, <laughs> hey, listen, we're gonna be here for a while, I think. So let me get to a couple of questions. So first from Alex, Mike, how come your mom wouldn't let you watch Ren and Stimpy? Because she was a good mom. <laughs> <laughs> she was a good mom. She, you know, she, um, uh, I, she just knew that it was a little too raunchy, and you know, for a uh, God, for a three-year-old, like, yeah. not the right time to watch that Ren and Stimpy, you know? And by the time I was old enough to watch it, I just had no interest, really. So I'm not big into, you know, yeah. gore and, you know, raunchy stuff. But Yeah, I'm, so, I'm you know, the same way. Yeah. Um, it's a preference. So lot, lots of people love them. I don't. So it's okay. So, yeah, that's fine. I mean, listen, I'm not going to lie. I do enjoy Ren and Stimpy now as an adult after studying animation. Mm -hmm. But um, as a kid, when it came out, I wasn't really into uh, into it. Right. But now um, we have a couple of other questions. So this is for yes. both of us. You're going to get to go first. Okay. Uh, did either of you like the original TMNT in the late 80s and early 90s? Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, Michelangelo uh, all the way. Interesting. <laughs> I'm a Donatello guy. But, okay. Uh, I, I mean, listen, I love them all, but Donatello. But yeah, no, growing up, 19, what is it, 1987, I think they started, or was it 89? Something like that. I remember the movie, I think, came out in 89. Yeah. And it, I watched it on VHS tape when I mm -hmm. when I bought it every day an entire summer. Wow. For the, I, I was obsessed with the Ninja Turtles as a kid. See, I appreciated them, but I, I, I knew a lot of people who were like, Turtles, everything. Like me, it was Sonic the Hedgehog, everything, or Disney, everything. But Turtles, I had appreciation for them. I did watch the show. I had the VHSs. Um, I liked the Turtles, so um, I had appreciation for them. So yeah. Um, okay, got another question. Favorite Disney villain, including the TV shows? Egg like Pete. Nice. <laughs> okay, I like that. It's good. Uh, I have a couple. They're from the movies. My first one is Captain Hook. I just okay. love Captain Hook. I'm a big Peter Pan fan in general. Um, and the other one is Ursula. I just love the way she is oh, of course, performed Ursula. and her her song. Just everything about her is yes. To me, just Ursula is my mom's favorite. Actually, yeah. you know, it's, she she quotes her all the time. It's what I do. It's what I live for. <laughs> that is my mom. Every time I think of her, so I, I, I will say this: I never do this in public, but I do sing the song. <laughs> And I get into it. My wife cracks up at it. Oh, you! If you're singing it, it's a Broadway. It's a Broadway song. You oh, need exactly. to get into it. You need yeah, to. I, I, if I, you I, don't, you're doing it injustice. That's all I've got to say. You know? I do a very bad impression. <laughs> like sometimes I'll I'll put it on my phone before bed. You know, I'll listen to oh, yeah. music or whatever, and I'll just yeah. as a joke put it on, and then I'll start doing. Oh everything. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and my wife just cracks off that as she thinks it's the funniest thing and also probably one of the most insane things I do. Well, I I mean, I've I've had girlfriends and they say, turn that crap off. What are you doing? I'm like, okay, you know, that's not yeah. the end of my life anymore. But anyway, moving on. Yeah, no, that, 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 <laughs> that happens. Uh, I, yeah. I, you know, I won't go into it. I've had an ex that was uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll talk off the air about that. Yes, we will. <laughs> Uh, Meanwhile, so, back at the plot. <laughs> so let, let's yeah, let's get back to the interview. So, yes. um, so you were drawing at an early age. When did you start learning how to animate? Well, I, um, I, I was yeah, I started just kind of dabbling when I was like eight or ten. Again, like Disney behind the feature scene stuff. I always, you know, I loved that. I actually had yeah. the opportunity to do a young scholars animation class when I was like 12 or 13 years old. Oh, and I got to do computer animation for the very first time. And it's a really cool story. Um, we had to take a famous quote from, from, from history and do an original animation to it. And I was struggling. So my dad said, you know, well, why don't you do the, st uh, the quote from the Japanese general uh, right after the bombing of Pearl Harbor. It's like, you know, and it's like, well, I think we've awoken a sleeping giant. 
<laughs> and so I'm like, okay, well, how would I do that? It's like, well, why don't you just have a sleeping giant and you have mosquitoes come and bug, bite them, and then you have the giant just smacking them with a fly swatter, you know? And that's what I did. I had a giant, a beanstalk. Anyway, so that was like my very first like foray, if you will, into animation. But mm -hmm. um, I didn't, I, I had a computer. I didn't really have computer animation software until I got into high school. And um, I actually <laughs> convinced my technology professor to get the uh, the latest version of Toon Boom Studio in 2005, and a Wacom like drawing tablet, yeah. and uh, all on the all on the school's dime. And this is a college prep, Catholic military school, and they're buying computer animation <laughs> software. So I mean, it, probably why I wasn't there very long. Um, but. Um, <clears throat> I got a fun military story. <laughs> I love I, so, um, but um, and my very first animation I ever did was ironically a Popeye the Sailor. So, thirties cartoons are just like ingrained in me. It's yeah. kind of like the deal. Yeah, that that's great. Cause I love that. I love that. I'm gonna tell you a quick military story, um, and this is nothing against the military in general, mm -hmm. um, but when you know when you're in high school. Um, Hold on, I'm getting a comment here. Any chance you can turn up the volume? A little hard to hear you guys. I have my speaker up. Um, maybe, I don't know, can you put yours? Let me know if you can put your speaker up because- Is this better? Yeah, let me know because I- Am I, I coming use, louder? Um, I'm let me using know. a certain microphone. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm using my webcam microphone instead of the headset because we're gonna show, um, we're gonna show some, some of your cartoons in a little bit. And for some reason, when I'm wearing my headset mic, I have trouble sharing audio. I oh, sure. So I decided to do this one without without my regular mic. That makes uh, sense. So tell me if you can hear us better. If we need, we'll shout. I don't mind. Um, I'm very loud, so let me know. <laughs> I don't mind shouting. <laughs> so here quickly, because I want to get back to to another next to the next question. But yeah, um, when I was in high school, you know, you start getting calls from people like, "Are you interested in this?" Um, so uh i get a call from one of the one of the services i don't remember i think it was the army mm -hmm. and they said you know we'll pay for college you know what do you want to do and i said animation and they're like what do you mean i said you know make cartoons like mickey mouse bugs bunny they yeah. said oh sorry we didn't know and hung up on me <laughs> Well, you know, I mean, that's that's some crap. I mean, uh, the years of service that Bugs and Daffy and Donald did for those guys in World War II. Okay, whatever. <laughs> uh, no, I, I love our boys and girls in, in uniform. I do, too. So. I'm a big yeah. supporter, but it, it, I just always go back and find Different it. time, man. Different time. They didn't appreciate it then, so exactly. it's okay. They exactly. do now. They do now. Cartoon Maniac says, sound is great here. It could be just an isolated incident for the viewer. Uh, yeah, I hope you can get the sound better. I do. I do apologize. Hopefully, it's nothing on our end here. Uh, ah. <laughs> so, so okay. So around twelve, you said you started animating for the yeah. first time, and you uh, you you pursued it into college, and you left. Um, you obviously left that college, and did you did you go to another school to to learn animation, or are you more self taught? I'm more self-taught. I um I went to the Illinois Institute of Art in Schaumburg. That was where I got my my bachelor's of fine arts, media arts and animation. First school, you know, first school I picked, first school I got into. Awesome. Uh, very lucky, and um, it was a great school. It's um a lot of happy years. I was actually talking with an old college friend of mine yesterday and reminiscing, which was really cool. And um, yeah, man, it was that was where. Chucky was born, and uh, I was a part of a group on campus called Tough Luck Studios. And mm -hmm. um, a, 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 a classmate of mine saw me doodling Mickey and Scrooge McDuck, ironically enough. And he's like, wow, you're really good. What's your major? It's like, I'm an animation major. It's like, oh, well, I'm doing this animation group on campus. You, you want to be a part of it? I'm like, okay, cool. Why not? And so I got on board, and um, I got to meet everybody, and they were all about making – you know, shorts that were going to compete with DreamWorks and Sony and Pixar. And I I'm like, okay, I'm for it. Let's do it. And um, one day when I was, you know, uh, after, after school, we, we met on Saturday, on Fridays and Saturdays when there weren't any classes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And one Saturday I'm there with my friend Jake and uh, he's working on this, uh, you know, this little animation and uh, I'm drawing 
Oswald the Lucky Rabbit on the dry erase board. Because at that point, just to kind of sidetrack a little bit, um, Disney had just reacquired the rights to Oswald the Lucky Rabbit. So he was everywhere, like late 2006, 2007. And working at the Disney store, I saw, you know, the, the DVD collection, the, the canvas print that they had, you know, the, the original, like everything. So I loved Oswald. I knew about him ever since I was a kid. Yeah. So just to see Oswald back, I'm like, oh, my God, this is so cool. I need to get Oswald. And so my my parents got me the DVD collection for Christmas that year. And I just poured into it and I like studied it and I loved you know, the stuff that Ub Iwerks did and the stuff that, you know, Harmon and Ising did and just all like just absorbed all of that 1920s goodness, you know. And so I'm drawing Oswald on the dry erase board and I go to my friend and I say, well, wh what do you think of this? And he says, I think you need to come up with something else. I'm like, oh, what do you think? It's like, well, you'll, you'll think of something. And he was working on this little uh, 3D animation with this badly drawn looking bird thing, like a chicken almost. So I look at his screen and I look at the mouth uh, at the at the dry erase board look back at the screen look back at the board then took two and two to put it together and this black and white chicken was on the dry erase board and we both laughed and I said you mind if I use these like yeah go for it man so mm -hmm. that's how Chucky was born and I've been working with them ever since that's fantastic yeah. so so that's you said around 2006 2007 yeah that's great um and in that time you've done how many animations with them? Since the cre since the beginning, I want to say I've done probably about eight or ten with him. Okay. So I mean, I do it the old-fashioned way, so it takes a long time. Well, let me. Have, this is something I didn't want to bring up. I, you know, I I watched your YouTube. Uh, I I told you I've I've watched your stuff for a couple of years now. Which I'm um, surprised. So thank you. Sure. <laughs> I, I, I do look up. Uh, you know, I do try to find in the animation as much yeah. as possible. Well, I mean, I'm only surprised because I started growing this year. Like I, when the pandemic hit, I was mm -hmm. able to start like, you know, promoting the crap out of the cartoon. And we went from, I think we had like 50 subscribers at the beginning to now we're sitting at almost 600. Like it just blew up out of nowhere. So Well, I am a subscriber. I don't know how long I've been a subscriber for. And, I, I appreciate that. And it's, been, it's been, uh, it's, it's, it's been a while that I know. Yeah. Um, I don't know when it, it probably in the last, I'd say two years, I, I started watching your stuff. Cool. Um, and I, and as I told you off the air, the reason I, I love it is it's that throwback to classic animation. It's clean and not just in look, but in, in story, in tone, the humor is kind of gives me that it's, it's like retro, but with a modern twist on it. So it's, it's, they're fun. Yes, that's what I like about them. They're fun. That's and, what I like about them too. And that's what I've and when I've told people to look at and there's people I have talked about and they ask me what what have you looked at lately that you like and I remember telling people go check this out. I don't know if they ever did. I hope they did, but that was the reason I gave them. Well, bless I, your heart, man. I need all the help I can get. <laughs> and, uh, it was it was you know it's great. Now we're gonna we're probably gonna look at a couple of cartoons that you've done. Um, but before oh we get to that, I wanted to get to, you said you do everything old school. Um, now, you're not on paper old school. You're just doing this on the computer, but still like hand drawn frame by frame. The originals were. The original couple of cartoons were on paper, like oh. hand drawn with the light box and timed out and everything and scanned to the computer. Um, mm -hmm. But now today we do uh, primarily on like hand drawn on a tablet. So we use Toon Boom okay. um, and uh, we, we try and do that contemporary classic look. Yeah. Um, I love so, Toon Boom there. Yeah, it's a great program. I, yeah. again, first one I really worked with. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I need, I, unfortunately, I couldn't afford to keep my subscription to it this year. Uh, <laughs> so I got to, I got to get it back. Um, mm -hmm. Because other than that, I really only have uh, Adobe Anime, which I love. But you know, you can do a lot cleaner work these days. And yes, okay. and if anything, like the original, uh, we in 2018 we did about five animated shorts, oh. and how we did those was I drew them in Photoshop, and okay. then I would render them out in Photoshop, put them through Premiere, and then just do, excuse me, all the editing and stuff that way. 
Well, a couple of years ago, I went ahead and bite the bit the bull. I'm like, all right, I'm going to get Tomb Boom, relearn it, redo the whole thing, and then with Grim Grinning Giblets onward, you know, that's all Tomb Boom work. So. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna, and and you're not just you're not the only animator on these. You're not sole animation, right? You're no, not anymore. No, I was before from 2007 to 2018. I was the sole animator, but again, starting with. Um, Grim Grinning, I have now got a small team of people helping me out. So That's fantastic. The, the best in the biz, let me tell you. <laughs> so what we're going to do is I'm going to share the screen real quick. Okay. And Well, not real. We're going to hold on to it for a while, I think. Oh. And I am going to put up some of your cartoons. Now we're going to look. Now, again, I don't know how YouTube's going to react or Facebook's going to react because I don't own these, but the truth is um, you give me permission, right? I did, yes. So if they're listening, I have permission to use these. Uh, I don't know how long I'm allowed to go without uh, without getting in trouble. Uh, don't flag him. I give him permission. <laughs> I made the stuff. <laughs> so I want to I wanna look at maybe two or three. We're going to look at some quick ones here. Sure. Um, but let's first start with wake up call the very first one. Oh boy let's go all right for, before anything let me uh i'm gonna put this full screen so we're uh we're gonna be off the screen okay um whoops wrong wrong screen here we go discovery plus is your home for all things sorry for the ads guys watch every now yeah i had to put this disclaimer in <laughs> So, and I'll explain why later, but yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> this is this is a trip. Wait, are you not here? Was there sound there? There is. Okay. And there you go. <laughs> Hi, folks. This is Chucky e. oh. Chicken. Sorry. <laughs> your cartoon. If yeah. You, you see, please hit that subscribe button. Please hit it. Yeah. And, and you know what? You're the voice. I am the voice. Yep. Um, I am the voice of Chucky e. Chicken. Howdy, folks. <laughs> uh, how did that come about for you? Not just you doing the voice, but how did it come about? Like this? How did you decide on that voice for him? You know, I, um, I, I audition people and it, you know, it's kind of funny because I, 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 I wanted him to be, a, you know, Midwestern, you know, very much like me. Um, I wanted him to have a little bit of a, you know, of an edge to him and uh, I auditioned people and people were close, but they were giving me, you know, like howdy folks, like real Western. I'm like, no, not, not, uh, not quite what I uh, wanted to, uh, you know what I, you know what I'm looking for, and then finally it just got to the point where someone was like, "Well, Mike, then you just do it." I'm like, "Okay, <laughs> then I'll just do it my damn self." <laughs> and it's funny because I learned later that's how Walt Disney became the voice of Mickey Mouse. I'm like, "Oh, okay, that's kind of fun." <laughs> um, yeah, but I, you know, I uh, just, uh, yeah, I, I just found a voice that worked, and I wanted to, I. Yeah, <laughs> no one's ever asked me that before, man. <laughs> this is new to me. Um, no, man, I um, I, I really love just like I just wanted a character that sounded somewhat natural. I didn't want super duper cartoony, you know, because yeah. as much as I love voices like Mickey and Donald and you know Goofy, those voices can grate on you after hours and hours and hours of you know working on a cartoon. So I wanted to do something that was you know. Because I thought, well, maybe I could do like a voice like this. But then it was like a gravelly Mickey Mouse. I'm like, no, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, so that's that's me. So that's uh, that's, that's what I'm doing. So 
I have people texting me and making me a wee bit on the nervous side, so I apologize. I'm just going to turn the phone. <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, so that's a trip. I, I had to share this with you. That was the first Chucky cartoon I ever did. I had help with it in college. Um, I had Coleman Surratt helping me with a little bit of the animation, like putting it from paper into Flash. And then I had a great uh, audio major, Jesse Ramey, do this, the Chucky Chicken theme song, which is the one we still use today. Mm -hmm. And um, and then another great guy, Devin Ray, helped me with the sound effects and the compositing and everything. And I was, you know, I, I love the cartoon, but it didn't really fit in with what I wanted to do with Chucky. But my mom was like, oh, you have to put up wake up call. That's like your first card. That's like your steamboat Willie. You have to put it up. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so that's where that disclaimer comes in. And if you read it, it says, you know, the only reason why this is up is because of my mom. So you can thank her. Yeah. And it's still up. <laughs> I, I did. I did read it. <laughs> yeah. Cause like I said, I went through all your, all your cartoons again today. Mm -hmm. Um, we have, uh, Tom, Chris asked, how long did it take you to animate that? 11 weeks. Nice. Took us 11 weeks to do that cartoon. Um, and it was supposed to be longer, believe it or not. I, I We wanted it to be um, a, a much longer piece, but and that was just the beginning, but that was all we had time for. But um, it turned out great. So it's it's still one of my favorite cartoons to, to watch and reminisce to. It's, it's, it's nice. I like it. It's, it's cute. I, I want to I show, though, the one I told you about. Which yes, is please. Favorite. My favorite. Actually, I don't think even think uh, Chucky's in it. He is not. But my favorite is uh, Burger Battle. I love how your favorite is the one without Chucky. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's the it's the joke. I get it. I know. I'm just messing with you. <laughs> Roll the clip. Roll the film. <laughs> I was using Google Analytics. No, where and film. Yeah. With a baby, I can create any funnel. <laughs> Rock, paper, scissors? <laughs> You're on. One, two, three, shoot! <laughs> Oh. What the heck was that? I played rock. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! There you go, man. That was that was a great cartoon. Um, I, I have to give credit to my uncle Rob for that one because he there was this uh, I think a, a, a Miller Light commercial where. They were playing rock, paper, scissors, uh, you know, to try and get the last beer. And the yeah. guy chucked a rock at the dude. And he's like, what was that? I played rock, you know, and he picked up the beer and ran. So I, you know, for that one, we just, you know, over-exaggerated it. And uh, thank you, Rob. Yes, that's one of my favorites too. Yeah. I love that one in particular because um, I got one of my favorite YouTubers, Chase Face, to mm -hmm. be the voice of the mayor for that one. Okay. And we got um, my good friend Zach Arbogast, who is the voice of, in Johnny of Johnny Jackman in that one. He's now Davy Dog, but and I'm you know the other bird. Um, but yeah, man, yeah, uh, the one with hair. You know. Yeah. <laughs> what we're gonna do is I'm gonna save more of these for later. I want to end at least with two shorts. Okay. So I'm not gonna show any more right now. Oh darn. But, uh, don't worry. We're gonna come back to a show. Definitely one. Hopefully two. Okay. Uh, Eric O'Reilly has LOL. It's definitely uh, that the joke. Just like I said, it's it's perfect. Yeah, um, that that is my uncle Rob, who was like, "Oh, come on, you got to do this. You got to make this cartoon." And I'm like, "Okay," and he pushed and shoved, and I I did it. I'm I'm thankful to him for it. So he really he really helped me out with that. It's it's fantastic. So you've been you've been working with this for a while. Yes. Um, he's he is your Mickey Mouse, if you will. That's right. Uh, <laughs> you want to? I'm sorry, my, I think I moved my camera a little bit. Um, okay. And you want to? Uh, you have a Kickstarter because what you want to do is actually make like a pilot episode now. Yeah. So we want to make an actual like high quality. Um, I don't want to say 
I, I used to say TV quality, but even more than TV quality uh, for YouTube. Like I want to make it so, um, you know, we've had this great renaissance, if you will, of YouTube animation with, you know, folks like um, Vivian Madrano with her shows like Has Been Hotel and Alba Boss. And um, there's so many other great YouTube animators out there that um, I, I want to, I, I think that this show would be perfect on that platform. It's something that I want to bring back that contemporary classic look. Um, it's something completely different than, you know, anything else that's out there. And uh, yeah, it's, um, you know, so we're, we're trying to get a seven minute full blown cartoon out there um, in this, in the exact way that we want the show to look. So with all, you know, with the majority of the characters um, with, a, a, you know, great writing, great voice acting. We have an all-star cast of people, um, a really unique mix of like Hollywood and YouTube, both working on this project. I don't know if you got a chance to take a look at who's involved in it, but. I have looked at your entire Kickstarter, <laughs> yeah. everything. So don't worry, I, I do my investigation yes. uh, before, uh, but we got a comment here. And aside from Disney and Looney Tunes cartoons, I've heard of Terry Tunes known for Mighty Mouse. Yes, I have heard of, yep, Terry Tunes, Mighty Mouse, Heckle and Jekyll, the whole yeah. the whole band of characters, I've heard of them, yeah. Yeah, I, I love all those old stuff too. It's for me, though, those were what were in reruns when I was yep. a kid. That, Hanna-Barbera. Yep. Like, like when I asked you your earliest memory, my earliest memory is McGill, Gorilla, and Ricochet Rabbit, you know, of, of cartoons. But, oh, yeah. Uh, but that, which Who does was, I love McGill? Oh, I love that. I mean, <laughs> I, have, I have shelves devoted to Adam Barbera in here just because I'm such a huge fan. Um, I, but, but yeah, it's, it's, though those cartoons were great. Actually, Joseph Barbera used to work for Terry Tunes. And, Did he? Yeah. Um, uh, Terry Tunes was in New Rochelle, New York. Mm -hmm. Pretty yeah, it was Terry Tunes and and I'm not going to go into the story. You can look it up on YouTube because I don't want to get it incorrect. But there was an issue with his paycheck. He was thinking, should I go out to California or should I stay? Mm -hmm. And there was an issue with his paycheck, so he left. And you can you can you can hear him tell the story. But yeah, he was yeah. working. I believe it was Terry Tunes he was working for. And thank um, God he left too, because yeah. look what he was able to do with Bill. You know. Yeah. So and Tom and Jerry and Yogi, Yogi Bear, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you definitely do that better than me. Oh, uh, well, my impressions are terrible. So yeah. I don't, I don't, I tend not to do them, especially on air. Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I would, but I don't want to embarrass anybody watching. So, you know, <laughs> it's okay. So let's, let's, uh, let's watch your intro for your Kickstarter here. We'll share that with everybody. Go for it, man. Let's do it. All right. Hello everyone, I'm Michael Cook, the co-founder and head of animation of Valley Studios. Today, I'm going to introduce you to Chucky Chicken. And instead of me going on about who he is, I'll just let him do the talk. Thank God. <laughs> Hi folks, I'm Chucky Chicken, and welcome to Featherton, USA. <laughs> over the years, making cartoons that make you folks smile. And we want to continue to do just that. If you didn't already know, animation takes a lot of time, especially the way we do it. We're one of the few YouTube animators that do things the old-fashioned way. Our goal is to create shorts that ring true to those of yesteryear, ranging anywhere from five to seven minutes long, with cartoony antics and fantastical worlds and environments. Not only does that take a lot of time, but also a lot of money. We've been able to mostly scrape by, but we want to make better cartoons more consistently. We're looking to raise $25,000 to make a full-fledged pilot episode. While we've been very grateful to have amazing talent over the years that have volunteered their time and resources to help bring our tunes to life, the goal has always been to turn this into a career and make cartoons full-time. With your donations, we'll be able to do just that. As a way to say thanks, 
we have a lot of great perks that we want to give to you lovely folks that support us. We have smaller tiers that include digital perks, some tiers that include smaller pieces like buttons, pins, movie posters, all the way up to the opportunity to join us barnyard friends as a resident of Featherton, USA. And that's only the beginning. Once things really start to ramp up, we have some extra tiers I can't wait to share with you. But uh, I got to keep those a surprise for now. We're in really troubled times right now. And all we want to do is to continue to spread some laughter, joy, and inspiration to the world. However, if you got a book or two and you want to help us bring some of that joy, then we sure would be grateful. On behalf of all of us here in Featherton, thanks for spending some time with us. And we look forward to bringing you more stories and laughter real soon. So long, everybody. That's my boy. <laughs> you know, I, I've watched this about two or three times because I really wanted to get an understanding. But every time I'm super impressed with your lip sync skills there. Those are great, great lip sync there. I love it. Oh, thank you. It, it took a long time. And, uh, yeah, I, um, it, it, it's very important that, you know, there's two things with these characters because of the, the limit, you know, in a lot of ways they're limited because of their features, but you can do a lot with the eyes and the mouth. If you can get those two right with this particular style of animation, you're golden. So we focused a lot of time on the eyes and the mouth and making sure that they are as expressive and and just as you know because you you can do so much with eyes and mouths so yeah but uh, no i uh, i'm very proud of what we've been able to do so far i mean this is like this is a labor of love for me i i, I grew up with you know cartoons from the classic era of animation and i didn't want you know another generation to go by where it was just, you know, Mickey Mouse and Bugs Bunny who were able to do this kind of animation. I think that anybody can do it. Um, and they don't have to be raunchy with it. You don't have to swear. You don't have to have explicit themes or anything like that. You can tell really great, fun-loving stories with really great, compelling characters and, yeah. and, and do it in this style and have a lot of fun with it. And we want to experiment with music. We want to experiment with, you know, great animation and wonderful stories. And with Chucky, you can do that. Like, I'm very, I'm very, very blessed, to be honest with you. And we, we do need help because it's tough. You know, we, we do, you know I, I had the opportunity to pitch the show to, uh, to Cartoon Network years ago. And, um, of course, you know, we didn't get picked, which is fine. But, um uh, he, he gave me some great advice. He said, you know, if you came to us with a big YouTube following, you know, there's a good chance that you could get it on Cartoon Network. But the way that the networks are kind of going this, this, you know, this day and age is like, you know, do you really need them though? You got Netflix, you got Hulu, <laughs> you got all of these great streaming services. So, uh, and even YouTube is a, uh, is an amazing resource for content, but, so I'm I'm really excited about where we're going to go, and we need help to get there. So that's why yeah. we're doing this, and um, the reception has been really good so far. I mean, we're ten days in and shy of two grand. So yeah, no, that's nice. Um, we're going to talk more about this. I just want to go to uh, Erica's comment. She goes, um, she said, I didn't know Joseph where I worked for Cherry Tunes. I learned that Ralph Bakshi did, and I only want to bring that up, which I was I was going to just make a comment off the air, but not off the air, but uh, without putting it up. Sure. But um, it's because you said, uh, you know, you don't have to make cartoons raunchy and have curses and stuff in there. Ralph Bashke is actually known for stuff like that. Um, and I'm not anti his stuff. I think I, I, I like a lot of what he what he's done. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I was a big fan of when he came back to Mighty Mouse and did the cartoon in the 80s. That was basically... Um, a platform for Ren and Stimpy to start, but right. um, but one of the things I do want to say is there's and it's something that you also said that Ralph I saw in an interview once that anyone could do this, and Ralph and I, I used to show, I used to teach uh, animation in college uh, a while back, and this this has to be over ten maybe fifteen years old. It's from him being interviewed at San Diego Comic Con. It's like a 10, 15 minute video, and he says anyone could be animating why are you looking to constantly go to like networks and things like that and trying to get all these fancy jobs you can literally buy a computer buy the software do it starve for a year 
and then turn around and sell it to a place like Netflix or H. Well, I don't think Netflix was around then, but like HBO yeah. or or whatever, and or put it on DVD and make your money. Now, obviously, we're talking Netflix, Hulu. Those type of things are always looking for um, for content. Right. It's it's a, it's a war between them now. <laughs> yeah, it is. Have what? Oh yeah, and they're all trying to be Disney, and I honestly I think they are. To be honest with you, I think they're doing. You know, Klaus came out a couple of years ago and just dominated. You know, and brought back 2D animation in a big way. Yeah. Uh, Sony, I think, has done some really great films that they just released. The Mitchells versus the Machines. Mm. Haven't seen it yet, but I've heard yeah. Yeah. wonderful things about it. But, but yeah, I and not only that, but being you know being on YouTube, you you get to really. I've been very blessed because I've seen a lot of the YouTube animation that's going on and. Mm because of the dreaded algorithm animation had to make this shift from you know the stuff that you know we grew up with you know full cartoons you know full color yeah. you know frame count now they're basically animatics that people yeah. put out like over glorified animatics which is which is great and i do know quite a few of the people in the in the youtube animation community and you know, i'm very i'm very close with a, a bunch of them and they're wonderful people, um, you know, but they, they had to adjust to what YouTube was demanding. And my philosophy is if you put out something that, you know, the users want and that YouTube, you know, uh, viewers want, then the algorithm will have no choice but to be like, oh, well, they want this. Let's pump out more. Let's get them more attention. And uh, I, I mean, and I think the one person who really did that in a huge way, just recently was Vivian Madrano. I mean, she has this. I don't know if you've seen Has Been Hotel or Hell of a Boss. Or Sounds very familiar show. to me. I'll, yeah, I'll have to look it up again. But I think yeah, I think I have. Yeah. But that's that's the kind of stuff that we want to do with Chucky. Like we want to bring good old fashioned, you know, higher frame count. We want to bring compelling stories. Um, a lot of you know, a lot of it today is you know stories, uh, you know, personal stories about uh, high schoolers and you know, early college and like uh, everyday life. Yeah. I'm about escapism. You know, I want to take you out of today and I want to put you into a different world. And I want to get, I want to introduce you to these really fun characters, you know, like Chucky and Louie Loon and Luca Bacon and Freddie Fox and Chelsea Chicken. You know, they're, they're all amazing personalities and they're all really great characters and they have fantastic stories to tell. Yeah. I mean, I, I can't wait to share them with the world. And we've been doing that now for the past, you know, three or four years with these shorts. So I just can't wait to, you know, when with, you know, with your guys' help, we can do that and we can make that happen. So, yeah, I got to say, I love everything you just said. Uh, my work's about escapism. I don't, I, you know, I, I'm never for reality in the sense you need, you need to remove yourself from reality. Right. And I think, I think it's great. Um, you know, even, even when I'm doing my art, whether it's animation or like ca car just cartoon illustration in general, I try to always take the reality out of it. My, my belief is create things that look believable, but mm -hmm. don't look real, you know, right. is be believable in movement, in design and style, but it doesn't, you know, you go back to the old, uh, you know, Looney Tunes, uh, the, the, the Maurice Noble backgrounds that he did for, well, any of the Chuck Jones stuff after right. they stopped doing Disney backgrounds and and losing the characters in there. Mm -hmm. um, hold on, I got a couple of comments here. Um, so Bring on. It says the style of character designs remind me of Disney Silly Symphonies. Are either of you uh, familiar with those? Of course, yeah, absolutely. The answer <laughs> is um, heck yes, absolutely. I got freaking Oswald right here on my shelf. Yeah, of and course. I got, uh, yeah, I got I mean, a lot of stuff all over the place. Yeah, um, yeah. but um, <laughs> and yeah, like I mean, kids. I I, I heard it best from um, uh, from Bob Bell who if you're if you're a native of chicago and you're you know you were a kid in the 60s 70s and 80s you know who bob bell was he was our bozo the clown on okay. wg at night and he said at best he said you know kids have enough during the day like they they go to school you know they they live their life when they come home they don't want to watch real life on television they want to you know escape they want to see yeah. something completely different 
And I want to be able to, to bring that to people. I want to be able to bring, you know, uh, get them out of that mindset and get them laughing. You know, we don't do ABCs. We don't do color charts. You know, we don't do multiplication tables. We just have, we get out there and let her rip you know? <laughs> and yeah. we just have fun. And that's what I, that's, that's what animation is to me. It's, yeah. you know, you can be realistic and there's a place for that. You can be yeah. raunchy. There's a place for that. You know, you can do all the, you know, the, the computer software and you can do the hyper realistic. That's cool. And I'm not knocking it. I mean, kudos on you. And if you can do it, that's fantastic. You know, but for me and for what my team does, we harken back to a time when it was a little more simpler, you know, a time where you didn't have to, I don't want to, you know, I'm not knocking any storytelling today. You didn't have to think as hard. <laughs> you know, you could just watch a cartoon and enjoy seven minutes of, you know, good storytelling, funny, compelling characters, uh, things that are clever. And, and, and then you can share it with your friends and be like, dude, check this out. This is great. Which I'm thankful that you've done for us, Mike. Like that is, that's just, that warms my heart to hear. So Listen, I, I, I love number one. I love helping indie artists in any form try to get out there when it's a project I believe in, especially when it's a project I believe in. Um, I think, like I said, and, we, and you were just saying it, it's, it's fun, it's clean, it's wholesome. Mm -hmm. We don't have a lot of that anymore. And, and, you know, I'm not anti it. I will watch that stuff. I enjoy that stuff. Right. But there is a place where sometimes it's oversaturated and mm -hmm. I don't want that stuff. Right. And I want to go back to something a little, a little, uh, cleaner and yeah. not as and not as uh you know suggestive and i'm not talking like sexually suggest just suggestive in other ways whether it's violence whatever it's just fun you know you know in that one we showed a rock falls on people that's 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 typical looney tunes you know we don't you don't you don't see that stuff a lot of cartoons today and and i'm not, not gonna some of them i find really funny mm -hmm. but it's more, you know, it's a lot less movement. It's a lot more, and I'm talking stuff you see on TV mostly. Um, you know, it's a lot less movement. It's more talk. It's almost like listening to a radio show with pictures. Whereas, which you can you can say, go back, Hanna Barbera did that. Uh, Jay Ward kind of did that, but it wasn't. Um, it, I, I also feel. A lot of the stuff out today, humor-wise, it's it's very nonsensical. Right, like you can be clever without yeah. being crass. Exactly. You know, like like you can. There's ways to do it. There's ways yeah. you, you don't have to resort to you know to swearing. You don't have to resort to explicit. You know, you, I, you don't need the shock humor. I, yeah. As a matter of fact, I think that if you're willing to go to the shock humor, you know, you're really robbing your audience of a, a, a great experience. It's, you know, I'm a fan of Mighty Python. I'm a fan of, you know, those those vaudevillians. I'm a fan of, like, all of those, that that kind of humor, that smart yeah. humor. You yeah. know, yes, of course, you can drop an anvil on somebody's head or drop a boulder or do something like that. Mm -hmm. um, but um, you definitely, um, you know, you can, you, there are other ways to, to make people laugh and to make people smile with, you know, without having to resort to that. So, and that's what we try to do. Yeah. It's and that's great. I, I love that. Thank you. Uh, let's uh, just say Alex said he sent you um, a connect on Instagram and sent his feed if you didn't see him in the comments. Um, but uh, let's start looking at this lovely Kickstarter you have here. Yes. All right. So the story we basically know, you've already told us. Yes. Um, and you've told us what you're asking for. Um, right. What I love here, you got your model sheets, you got your color swatches going on here, so you can tell people the palette of the color. So if I wanted to, I could actually download this image and for fun animate this character now because I have all this in their color scheme. Well, thank you, and I got to take it down. <laughs> <laughs> well, you own the character, don't worry. Right? No, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think that's important for people to see yeah. like how we do it. So I think I think so, and I like I like that you have it up. Um, mm -hmm. You know, not a lot of people know model sheets or understand them. Right. Um, like I said, I taught animation for years. I've done animation. Mm -hmm. um, I've made I don't know, <laughs> model sheets over my time. Uh, and I love looking at them. 
Mm -hmm. So I think this is great getting to see the character in in all the different poses and the turnaround. Um, I love this right here, all your characters, kind of like a size comparison chart. Yep. Um, being a being like an old school Disney fan, and I'm sure you've looked at old Disney model sheets and yes. model sheets of other of other studios of the time. Do you ever just do uh, like pose sheets for your characters? Oh, of course, one hundred percent. You like uh, we ha you have to experiment with how the character's going to move and what what works and what doesn't work. What yeah. you know. Because a lot of people don't realize that, you know, a lot of the modern day, like the Mickey Mouse cartoons that are on Disney Plus now, they do, they have a, a, a process called being off model. And being yeah. off model means it's like it's the character, but it's such exaggerated feature. It's like it's and it uh, it prohibits to meme culture. You know, that's why mm -hmm. they do it, because they want to have like the memes out there. SpongeBob is known for doing it. Um, a lot of contemporary cartoons do it a lot. Um, yeah. But they'll go so off model that it's no longer the the, the, the character anymore. Um, and, you know, just being rooted in, you know, and, and being rooted in the fundamentals is very, very important. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, I mean, that's what we try and do with these characters. Yeah. No, this is, this is great stuff here. I love looking at it. Um, this video, is this something we've seen or... Uh, a little bit in the, that's a rough animation. Uh, that's a test that we did or that I did. You're more than welcome to play. There's no sound, but. Okay. Well, we'll just, yeah. Play. How long oh, is it? I don't like remember. seven seconds long. Not that Okay. Long. Then I'm not going to make it full screen. It takes me that long for it to just. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So we'll do tests like these to figure out how the character moves mm -hmm. and you know what we want them to do. And that's it. We're going to yeah. play it one more time. Yeah. Go for it. That was a lot of fun to do, like experimenting with squash and stretch. And yeah, and and I'm loving, you know, you don't, like I said, or, and you said this too, not many people do frame-by-frame frame animation anymore, and it's really nice to see it done, you know, yeah. and how your test, and you have a nice cleaned up, you know, uh, Chucky there. So for the most part, you know, he's still a little, little sketchy, but you know, he's I couldn't really, I mean, okay. Yeah. I can. Yeah. Yeah. I can see now. <laughs> but, oh, now, now that you mentioned it, yeah, it looks like garbage. Well, you know, I, I'm, I'm also <laughs> leaning back so I can be on camera, uh, no, I get that, yeah. but it's, but it happens. Like I have a, a drawing I did um, and I think it looks great. I still use it all the time for, um, for promotional stuff. And I remember being on an interview and somebody asked me about it. I'm like, oh, well, you know, if you really look at it, you can tell that the back leg is thicker than the front leg. And from perspective, the front leg should actually be bigger. And it's all messed up. And no one could tell unless I point it out. Right. You know, it's just yeah. what we what we see. And, um, and to be honest with you, I think pencil tests are sometimes even better than finished animation. Oh, Because yeah. you can really see, you know. The test at the test animation move fluidly compared to the final versions of the cartoons. Yeah. In my opinion, you're right because that's a newer one. <laughs> <laughs> you are 100 percent right. Um, we were more limited in those days because we were trying to get them out super quick. But now we're taking our time and actually doing a higher frame count. So thank you for calling this out. <laughs> I mean, we're learning. You know, we were learning. So that's just kind of how you grow. You start from the basics, and you weren't. You you know. Richard yeah. Williams said it best, a, you know, and a uh, advanced use of the basics. That's what we're trying to do. So, no, this is this is great. You know, I gotta say, and and before I even get to this part, I told you before we came on, um, I I haven't animated in a while professionally, mm -hmm. um, or even just for fun for the most part, uh, and I've been really trying to want to get back into into animating, and. This is very inspiring to me. Uh, just the stuff that you're doing. This is the type of stuff I loved doing when I was animating. You know, when I started, it, it was it was the probably when I started working animation, maybe '95, '96, and we were using software um, 
Flash wasn't even around at that time, I don't think. We were using a program called Director. Um, uh, yeah. And uh, we were making, like, my first job was making um, educational video games for kids. Nice. And I started off as a character designer, and then they brought me into animation. And some of the stuff that you were you were talking about, about your working methods, doing stuff in Photoshop, bringing it into Premiere, um, all that stuff, stuff into Director, I was, I was doing it that way. So there was... Uh, a lot more like limited animation stuff, but um, around like 2000, 2000, like between 99 and 2001, when the internet started, everyone started doing like the internet stuff, I got to work on some animations that were a little bit more the start of animations on the internet, I guess, if you will. Uh, I don't want to, I don't want to say that because I know I wasn't the first or even there's but I was working for a company that was trying to do some animations for the for the web. Were you a new grounder? Uh, <laughs> a long time ago, I did I did a little new ground. I, none of my stuff's up there anymore. Right. Um, I I missed the boat with new ground. I, I mean, kind of. It's still up there. I mean, you can still go. <laughs> yeah, you can go to new ground. Sure, if you don't like YouTube. <laughs> You know, I was listening. I, I'll, I'll, I'll get to that in a moment. But I was saying, when I was working for that company, mm -hmm. I was doing like frame by frame animation. Yeah. And that was, and but we were doing it on paper, scanning it in, and and stuff. So I miss. I love. I love the frame by frame. But you know, just speaking of Newgrounds, I was listening to. I don't know who the interview was with, but it was an animator who's on all different platforms and has done other work outside professionally. Mm -hmm. um, and they said, and this was like maybe two years old, this interview. And the and the animator said, Newgrounds is still great. Um, it's, you know, it's it's changed. You know, it's not all Adobe Animate Flash animation. People are bringing in Toon Boom stuff to it. And, really? you know, so it, it's up there. It's still a good, the way they were explaining was saying it's still a good website for animators to see other animation work and you know even to do like networking and to just share share stuff you know i mean they have also opened it up i forget how many years ago but opened it up to illustration work and uh you know so it's different now i'll watch animation on any platform so once in a while i do go to new grounds but if i do that once a month that's a lot i'm not gonna lie yeah. i'm usually more on i'm usually more on youtube uh, look at well, stuff. I'll, I'll have to check out Newgrounds again because I mean, I yeah, I frequented it when I was younger. Yeah, and you know, a lot of my favorite, you know, Eagle Raptor started on there. Rubber Ninja, Rubber Ross started on there. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, I I admire what it started. You know, that was kind of like the real birth of internet animation. Yeah. like that was, you know, it, it before like I grew up with Homestar Runner and Strong Bad and the Cheat, and like that was my you know, introduction to computer animation and they, you know, they, they, they were hysterical to me. My mom hated strong bad, but I, I loved it. You know, you know, holy crap was a word I was not allowed to say when, you know, around my mom for the longest time. Um, but yeah, but that was like the real Genesis of, you know, of internet animation. And then when you, YouTube opened up and, you know, everyone migrated over there, animation dominated for a long time. It wasn't until yeah. the vloggers came and, you know, messed up everything. <laughs> I can't, but. You have to, because we're on YouTube right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm watching my numbers dwindle <laughs> as, we're, as we speak. Anyway. <laughs> so yes. let's meet the crew. So there's Michael yeah. Cook, who. That's me. Yeah, we all know. Um, <laughs> I'll so, go down the list here real quick. Yeah. Rebecca Rodriguez is an amazing uh, graphic artist uh, in Puerto Rico. She joined the project. She's my co-showrunner. Um, she's the reason why a lot of the characters look good now. As a matter of fact, the poster that's you know um, that was on the uh, on the Kickstarter for a minute, and is actually uh, featured on the Chucky Chicken page. She helped ink and color that with me so she okay. taught you know she really taught me how to get the crisp clean lines and you know she helped me really make the characters look fantastic so i owe a lot to her uh brian finley canadian animator he was our uh, animation director and storyboard artist mm -hmm. um he's worked on stuff like club penguin uh he currently is um 
filming his own show, drawn to it up in Canada for the Bell Network. Laura Van Gallen, she is another amazing animator. She's in the Netherlands. She and her sister run the artistry and they do a lot of work with us as well. And then these three guys, these are pretty important guys in our in our show. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, when I saw the names, I'm like, and by the way, I interviewed Tom on another show I did. Oh, did you really? Tom's an awesome guy. Yeah. He's fantastic. Oh, uh, well, well, we could talk about that off the air. Yeah. Okay. okay. So if you don't know who Tom Ruger is, he's the guy who invented Animaniacs, Pinky and the Brain, Tiny Toon Adventures. I mean, he basically made your childhood. You can look him up. He is our story advisor and our production consultant. He loves Chucky Chicken, and he sees a lot of potential with it. He's a big find and a big help. Mike Pollock, Dr. Eggman from the Sonic the Hedgehog series. He is the voice of Tommy Turkey. Uh, wonderful guy, super duper talented, and just he's actually one of the oldest voice actors on the show Like that's been with our show for like the longest, um, mm. which is fantastic. And then John Ortiz, some call me Johnny on YouTube, an amazing game reviewer, podcaster. He's doing some voices for us. This is his first actual like voiceover gig. He, he, he's also an animator. He also went to the Art Institute in Philadelphia. So I have that connection with him and we just bonded super duper well. And he, uh, great guy, super duper sweet, super chill. Yeah. I loved his videos. I'm like, dude, you got to do what you say. Well, all right. Well, you know, I think I don't remember if it was Philly or if it was Pittsburgh, but I used to teach online at the Art Institute. I taught storyboarding. No kidding. Yeah, that's amazing, man. Yeah, maybe, that's maybe you had him in his class. You never know. I, I think I don't. Well, I, it's been <laughs> years, so the name won't sound. I I, I stopped what 2000, maybe seven. So. He probably was just starting around. That's yeah. when I started. So you never know. Yeah. But yeah. anyway, yeah, that's, you know, that's the, yeah, there's others, you know, there's Andrew Mortimer who's involved as well in England. Um, we have uh, Moy Ag in, in Mexico. We have um, a, a lot of great people all over the world. It is really an international cast, which is I was super cool. I was going to say, I love that because animation and, and the pandemic proved it. Yeah that you don't need to be in a studio to animate and make cartoons. Nope. You don't have to be together. Um, so Discord, yeah. everyone. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, no, dude, I love Discord. Hold on. Let's just go real quick to some of the comments, if I can get to the right screen. Go for it, man. What screen am I on here? Okay. So Rambling Rod says, I worked with Ryan on a few things. Great dude to work Yes, with. he says hello, by the way, Rob. Uh, <laughs> you know, he he's like he's very persistent to have you as a voice actor. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, as am I. So we're, we're going to work together soon. So just so you know. <laughs> uh, and we got dude, Tom Ruger is one of my all favorite creators. Up there, Kevin Eastman, Mike Judge, Bob Camp, and Alex. Okay. Mine too. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I will say this. When I interviewed him, I mentioned a cartoon he wrote for mm -hmm. when I was a really young, which was one of my all-time favorite cartoons. And no, and very few people remember it. It's called Black Star. And it's it's the precursor to He-Man. It's the reason Filmation got He-Man. No kidding. It, it was a, um, it was a, uh, a story about John Black Star, who I believe he was supposed to be uh, like Native American, was an astronaut, got sucked through a black hole and ended up on the planet Sagar. And there was the evil overlord. And there were two swords. You know, one, he had the, I forget if he had the star sword and the other one had the power sword, whatever it was. But when they, they came together, they became this one powerful sword, just like the story of He-Man. Right. Skeletor. So it was very, and so when Mattel approached um, Filmation about He-Man, they were like, well, you kind of already did it. So they, if they, they without Black Star, you wouldn't have He-Man. And it's, right. uh, it's really cool. And, and he got to write a lot of the episodes. And, and I've always thought Black Star had so much more potential than He-Man. And it got, you know, if you go watch it on, on YouTube, it's not a great cartoon. <laughs> it's, it's not a great I mean, cartoon. I mean, it's 1981. It has so much potential in the story, mm -hmm. but it's such a, it's, 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 it's just not like you look at him like, oh my god, this is this is just cheese. It's it's just bad. But and now is it clutch said, cargo bad where they had just the superimposed lips? Because if that's no, the case, no, no, no. <laughs> it's, it's a thousand times better than clutch cargo. Okay. Um, but yeah, no, no, it's it's great, and uh, and I just I've always been a Black Star fan, and I got to talk to him about that. Mm -hmm. I thought that was just really cool. 
because he was he's a, a super sweet guy. He's yeah. super duper cool. I love him to death. He, yeah. he just is. He's always pushing us to make better cartoons. And he, as our story advisor, he's helping us really push the boundaries of you know tropes and animation. So, yeah. like, if, for example, Wiley e. Coyote is always in the desert. What happens if you take him and put him in a city? You know, what, like, like that kind of thinking. Like, he's very, very good at pushing those boundaries. So I'm very excited to work with him, as well as a lot of our other writers that we have. Like, we have quite a, a great group of people that are also voice actors as well. Speaking of which. <laughs> let's voice act, you segue awesome, man. Um, <laughs> so, Michael Cook, we've That's already heard your voice, and we heard how uh, you came up with him. That's right. All right. Chucky Chicken. Now, I'm going to let you say the name so I don't screw anything up. I may screw him up, too. Please forgive me. We have uh, we have Shanta Parasuman, who is the voice of Chelsea Chicken. Um, she's also uh, done a little work as Ms. Marvel or, or, yeah, or Captain Marvel, one of the two. I think Ms. Marvel, actually. Okay. Um, Alex Hanley, the voice of Louie Loon, a great guy, wonderful Irishman, love him to death. Mm -hmm. Caroline Cabal Coniglio over in Japan. She's the voice of Margarita McCaw. Will Engel, uh, the voice of Johnny Jackrabbit. You can hear him on Fast Pass Facts. Uh, mm -hmm. Kylie Rutson, the voice of Johnny Jackrabbit. Chloe DeChozo, an amazing singer here on YouTube, is the voice of Anna Lam. Uh, radio personality in Hawaii, Ed Kanoi, is the voice of Chu Chipmunk. We already know who that guy is, Mike Pollan. <laughs> um, Ted Hazard, who chipped in, he's the voice of Freddie Fox. John Ortiz is Luca Bacon. Uh, Zach, I spelled his name wrong here. Zach Arbogast, not Arbergast. I have to change that. Is the voice of Davy Dog and does it phenomenally well. And then Jennifer Bring, uh, Birmingham is the voice of Viv Vixen is her name. I don't know why it says Viv Fox there, but yeah. So, and then these are the main cast of the characters. And then going down below, we have a wonderful group of people. Um People that I met in Chicago, like Malcolm Ray and Jim Jarosh, uh, Mary Negozi Kneecamp, personal friends, Matt Heine, um, we got Jacob Ed Keen, Miranda Guzman, Cyrus Rodas, Rebecca Cara Morano, Christina Costello, my brother, Alex Cook, and then, of course, the <laughs> lovely Christina Nichols are all doing extra miscellaneous you know, voices, and they just do them so well, which I'm very proud and wonderful to have this group with us they're all remarkably talented a lot of them come from theater a lot of them come from uh anime dubbing a lot of them come from radio um the theater it's it just a wonderful group of people um malcolm and jim are from channel awesome with the nostalgia critic mm -hmm. so um who i got to work with on a previous show the cartoon guy mm -hmm. and um they wonderful. I'm just so excited about this cast. Like they really bring the characters to life. So super cool to have them. And we hope to have more guest stars on as well. Uh, if we get the funding that we need to make it happen. Yeah, no, that that's, you got, you got, I mean, listen for, for this, this looks like a great group of people, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and I and just, I want to say, I love you know, looking at the characters that they voice next to them, mm -hmm. you know, you really get a feel of, of character, you know, personality. Yeah. Uh, even if you've never watched a cartoon, like, like here's your peg, like Pete, basically. Pretty right? much. Yeah. You know, I look at him, I see the hamburger. I think Wimpy from Popeye, just this. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, you know, basically a goofy type of character here. He's not a goofy character. He's more of um, he's more of a Jed Clampett type, to okay. be honest with you. So, okay. yeah, and and that's the, that's the thing. Like we try and we we don't want to stray too far from our roots. We want to expand and do other different characters and different, you know, uh, kind of contemporary storytelling. So that's what we're excited about. And it really is a character driven show. Yeah. You know, these characters have wonderful stories to tell so that's what we're excited to do and and i want to say i forgot to bring this up i don't know if it's it was in a picture in the beginning or if it's in no it's probably in here when uh when chucky was looking at, over the town mm -hmm. i love i rewatched it again today and i loved the haunted mansion tribute you did <laughs> yeah. and i forgot and i noticed i didn't notice it the first time i watched it or the first couple of times but today when he was looking over i'm like 
the haunted mansions in the background as part of the town. I love that you added that in. Well, we, there is a short that I, I can actually send you the link to if you okay. don't have it already called Grim Grinning Giblets. We can watch that as one of the shorts if you want. We can talk about is, that. That's not the six and a half minute one, right? That's that is the six and a half minute one, actually. So okay. I don't know if you want to watch it or if you want to watch it later, but that is definitely our tribute to the Haunted Mansion. So we had to put Grace yeah. and Manor in, in the town. We had to. So. All right. Let's. Uh, let's so you. you Moving on down. Yeah, yeah. So why Kickstarter? I mean, I think you already told us, right? Yeah. You want I mean, to make something good? We want to make something good. We, want, we don't want to have to wait for like a network to green light us. I mean, it's 2021. Yeah. You know, we have the technology. We have the, the talent. We have. The, the drive, we have the gumption, we have the stories, we just need the funding, you know? And Kickstarter has proven to be an amazing platform for people to literally kickstart their dreams. No pun intended, but that's really, so that's why we started. And for us, it's like, you know, it's one of the oldest platforms for crowdsourcing. Um, it's, you know, it's a trusted name and um, it, it it will allow us a lot more independence when it comes to uh, production where we don't have to answer to, you know, a studio executive. We don't have to answer to a board of directors. We don't have to answer to, you know, uh, it, uh, you know, censors or, you know, PC people. Like we can make cartoons our way and, you know, push the envelope, but don't push the boundaries. You know what I mean? Like yeah. we have three core pillars of what makes a Chucky e. chicken cartoon a Chucky e. Chicken cartoon, and that's, you know, creativity, characters, and uh, story. So, um, and just sticking close to those pillars, you know, will allow us to make some really great cartoons. And we want to prove that you don't need, like, again, that's what the internet is for. Like, if people want this to happen, it will happen. And yeah. a lot of people have said, we want this to happen. Now we just got to, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, get them to share with the people who, you know, who they want to see it happen too. So. Yeah. No, that's great. Let's, let's look at the rewards here. Okay. What do people get for helping you out here? So for $5, you get a digital thank you card with an exclusive at, uh, with exclusive animation, early access to the pilot episode. Yep. Nice. So $15, we move up to the digital goodie bag, which is wallpapers. Yep. Digital art book, digital thank uh, thank you card, and early viewing. So, the digital art book is it like the art of? Uh, yeah, it'll it'll be like um, you know model sheets from when we first created the character to now, uh, evolutions of the characters. You know where they came from and kind of the thinking, as well as the backdrops and the world of Chucky e. Chicken, how it went from the old barnyard to Featherton, um, you know, kind of some of the stories that we wanted to tell that didn't make it and some that will make it. And uh, yeah, so we're, I'm excited to put that together. So it'll be, that's it'll great. be fun to, to reminisce. That's, that's really great. Yeah. All right. Um, for 25, you get what we've just talked about, but also stickers. Who doesn't love stickers? I don't know. I have a nephew that loves to stick them on things that he shouldn't have. But uh, there you go. <laughs> I hopefully he grew out of that by now. No. Um, <laughs> um, for thirty-five, the things you got the same, you know, stuff from previous, but also buttons. And are these going to be the specific buttons, or is these just uh, kind of ideas? I'm gonna. Uh, I'm not gonna tell you. It'll be a surprise. So okay. you know, gotta have some things uh, as a surprise. You know. <laughs> now this one I really like. Uh, so all the previous stuff, but an enamel pin. Mm -hmm. I love pins, and uh, I I do too. I worked at Disney, and pins yeah. were a big part of the Disney experience. So I I I've always wanted to have an enamel pin of Chucky, and yeah. there will be people who will have Chucky pins. So yeah. I'm excited, and again. That's that may or may not be the design. You never know. We may design an exclusive one for the Kickstarter campaign. That's what we promise. So mm -hmm. you never know. We'll leave that a surprise. Very hush hush. <laughs> <laughs> so for eighty five dollars, we get all the previous stuff, but also a movie poster and the music and soundtracks. Mm -hmm. So that's that's cool. I like yeah. That. 
Uh, when you say mo oh, it says sixteen by twenty one. Okay, I didn't see the size before. Yeah, so something that you can like put in a frame, like an actual like good size movie poster. You can, yeah. you know, vlog with if you want. So, mm. and again, that is one of the designs. You never know; there may be yeah. more. So, just stay cool. tuned. Uh, hundred dollars, everything from previous, but now we'll take your character design and draw it in the show style. Yep, and we'll give it to you. Like that's a that's a uh, you know basically we'll take your character, we'll chuckify it, and then we'll send it back and say thank you. And that's our way of you know being able to bring you into the show in a way. So, uh, so now this one for two fifty is everything from before, right? Yep. But now you actually get it in an actual bag. Yes. Right? An actual swag bag will be coming be swag delivered bag. to your home. Yep. Get the Chucky swag bag. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> now, there, there's a typo I do have to fix. Um, mm. So for 200 there it's it, there's an early bird special. So if you get it between a certain time, um, you it, we it's for 200 but then after, it'll be 250 So okay. just want to clarify. It's, it is in the pledges. So I don't know why it didn't make it over to the actual. Thank you for you know critiquing my work on the spot and making me look like a damn fool. But you know, <laughs> I will be hearing from my uncle about this later. I'm sure. <laughs> so I won't bring up that you have two of these in here. No, nope, just keep going. Keep, keep going. going. Keep scroll going. up. Scroll up. There you go. <laughs> uh, Five hundred dollars. Honorary yeah. crew member. So you yeah. So it. yeah. We'll oh, teach you. Yeah, so we'll it, it'll be a two hour one on one session uh, on either animation or voiceover, and you'll work with us. You'll sit in in one of our meetings. Uh, you'll get to meet the cast and crew, uh, one time thing, and you'll you know we'll teach you how we do it. And um, yeah, it'll be a fun experience. You'll be able to take everything with you and uh, just kind of learn because we want to be able to teach the next generation like how we do it and keep it alive. That's fantastic. So, yeah. Um, and then for a thousand, you get to be in the short. It's a limited to 10 people. Yep. Yep. Well, uh, you, if you got a character or if you just want to be in the show, we'll give you, we can either uh, have you cameo in the show, um, or give you lines I again. It's just a surprise. We'll have to, you know, you'll just have to see what happens, uh, when you donate. Yeah. And then obviously the big one, you know, obviously if you're going to donate, Five thousand bucks. First of all, number one, you're crazy, and I love you for it. Um, but then, yeah, we'll we'll put you in the show. We'll make sure that your character, your voice, and everything is a part of it, and you'll be a permanent resident of Featherton. Nice. And two people will have that honor. So, <laughs> and unfortunately, due to my budget, one won't be me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, can't get them all. Yeah, <laughs> you have a lovely pin, though. <laughs> I, I, I will say, I will say, there will be a level I'll be donating to. I appreciate. Um, that. I won't. I won't say on the air, but I, I definitely there's some fun stuff here, yeah. and I really want to support what you're, um, what you're doing here. So let's see here. I got a comment. I just want to go to. Yes. Um, it says Michael. This has honestly been a great watch. Awesome to see such passion and love for Project Cross when you talked about it. MC just uh, I just popped off because the dogs need their night walk. Good vibes. All right. Well, dogs have to pets come first. Absolutely, family and pets first. Yeah, unless you're my pet, then it goes to my wife first. She wants <laughs> all, all my cat wants is to be be around her. Hey. So, unless unless she's asleep, then it then it comes to me. There you go. Um. So now the stretch goal. I love it. Squash and stretch goals. Ain't that cute? Yep. We're not talking about the stretch goals. Those are well, super, super secret. Lot. I do. Yes. Well, we have goals. Like, um, I will say this: the more that we make, the better. You know, we have better ideas for better rewards. You can mm -hmm. obviously get a glimpse. I've left a little bit of a seek. You know, a little bit of yeah. uh, surprise in there. But if you're just glancing, you know, real quick, but. Um, we do have some fun things that we want to do. And if we meet certain goals, we will do it. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, I wanted to make it a more of a surprise for people as they donate more and as, you know, if we make more goals. So, yeah. So let's take a look at your budget. Or we oh boy. No, we don't need to show that. Uh, <laughs> and, scroll up, they, scroll up. They, they, they make you, uh, I, I know they tell you, you got to talk about how you're going to spend. I don't, I don't. 
I personally don't care where the money is going. I understand business-wise it has to go places. Right. I just want you to make a great cartoon. Thank and, you. And I, me to too. Share, you me know? too. Yeah. I want to make a. I want to make a fantastic cartoon, and I. I want to do. Uh, the Nine Old Men Proud. I want to do Walt Proud. I want to do Chuck Jones and the Boys of Termite Terrace Proud. Um, like this is a cartoon that I feel that we're making for them, you know. And Fantastic. it's, you know, I, I really there's something to be said for this style of animation. It needs to come back, um, in a non over exaggerated, complicated way. Um, you know, it, it, cartoons don't need to be. I mean, again, time and place for everything, right? They can yeah. have super duper extensive lore. They can be as raunchy as they want. They can have super deep, you know, uh, fan bases and, you know, shipping and all that stuff. That's great. And I, you know, I encourage it. That's super cool. Our stories, I just, you know, I want them to be classic contemporary. You know, I want them to be something that'll live on forever, that people will, um, will want to continue to watch, that they'll love Chucky e. Chicken as much as their favorite cartoons now. You know, yeah. So that's the goal, and that that's great. I, I listen. I know I'm going to be backing this. I'm hoping all my viewers are backing this. When I'm done, I'll send you. When it'll be tomorrow, because YouTube takes time. I will send you this link so you yes. can share it out. I will share it out um, because you know, number one, it's a lofty goal, uh, and and I know. No, listen, listen. I know. I've seen a lot of Kickstarters, and and. You know, I believe in this one a lot. Thank you. Not that I don't believe in the others that I, I pitch on here. I'm just saying, like, you know, I'm usually talking comics, so the goals aren't right. as high. Um, and our, it, this is what you have 50, 49 days to go. Yeah. So the more you push it, the better it is. And I'll be happy to help promote this yep. uh, and, and, and share this. It's, it, it, you, you know, like, like we said, your cartoons are clean, they're fun. I think. You know, you see the Disney inspiration. You can see the Looney Tunes in there. Um, these are the cartoons that so many people grew up on that, you know, when you look at what's going on, just take Cartoon Network, for example, it's not what you do anymore. You right. know, your stuff is like what you would look at on Boomerang, you know? And um, I just, you know... It's it's important that people know that this type of animation still exists. There's people out there who want to bring these types of of stories, these shorts, mm -hmm. um, because there isn't there is an audience out there for it. It's just sometimes hard finding that audience. Yeah, and we have lofty goals with this show. Um, you know, Tom Ruger, when he did Tiny Toons, you know, he was regulated because they had to make the next generation of Looney Tunes yeah. verbatim. Like Bugs Bunny had Buster Bunny. Ducky, uh, Daffy Duck had Plucky Duck. You know, Porky had uh, Hampton. But when they did Animaniacs, they could throw that rule, bo rule book out and just go back to the boys at Terramite Terrace and say, let's do it like they did it. Let's just yeah. throw the rules out make our own characters, but still make it like a modern day Looney Tunes. And, you and, know, that, sorry, and that's sorry. what we, oh no, that's okay. And that's what we're doing here. Like we want to make, like, we don't want to, you know, just do verbatim what they did back in those days. Cause yeah. you know, uh, that I mean, it works like Cuphead did it, you know, Bendy and the Ink Machine did mm -hmm. it, you know, for video games. They put them in that 1930s world. It works. We wanted to take it and make it, you know, kids kids can't watch uh, television or they can't watch shows and not have a computer, not have a cell phone. They, it'll go over their heads, you know. Yeah. So for us, it's like how do you, it's a really unique puzzle that we have to put together, like how much classic and how much contemporary and in the middle, like that's what we're going for. So it'll be really exciting to, to bring these characters to life and still pay homage to the past. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm. I think I think this is this is perfect, man. This is what people need to uh, need to be seeing. Um, Thank you. Uh, I want to, uh, I, and maybe I can just switch over to. Uh, oh, so the screen does appear. 
So nice. I'm going to try. Let's let's look at. Um, I want to because we're going to wrap up soon. Okay. I do think you and I could just sit and talk about <laughs> cartoons and animation for such a long time. We're going to fall off topic. Right. Um, <laughs> but I'll segue. I will segue. Ugh, if I could talk. Yeah. Just keep going. <laughs> Never mind. My my segue skills have been demolished with that one jib. So go for it. <laughs> Done so with I'm, the segues. I'm going to choose maybe, um, or no, you know what? You tell me, not since we ha don't have here the one out of the two that we. Well, Grim Grinning Giblets is right at the bottom. It's it's the one in purple. Like if you go down a little bit, like where it says Orbi. Oh, right here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that is way, just so you know, I'm colorblind, so purple doesn't. Really oh, well, yeah. Well, there you go. Like that's that's the one yeah. that uh, the Haunted Mansion one. And this is a really special one, actually, because. Long story short, we wanted it to be. Uh, we had three uh, gold with this one. Yeah, I'm gonna. We want, yeah, we wanted to do um, a tribute to the haunted mansion, which turned 50 in 2019. Mm -hmm. We wanted to do a Halloween special, and we wanted to remake um, uh, Chicken Fright because that's what it. This is what it should have been back in 2012. I wanted to have a connection with Disney directly, so the ghost host in this cartoon is actually the son of the real ghost host in the Haunted Mansion. Really? So Paul Free's son, Fred Freeze, uh, actually lent his voice to our ghost host in, in Grace and Manor, which was super duper cool. So I, I was very blessed to work with him. So, yeah. Awesome. All right. We're going to watch this. And again, YouTube and Facebook, I have permission from the creator. Do not... Uh... <laughs> Don't demonetize, don't flag. It's mine. <laughs> so let's just I'm here. Let's let's uh play this here. Yeah. And Besides, go, you know, go. reaction channels, they can get away with that crap. I mean, you should be fine, man. You're good. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry, I was watching this a little bit. <laughs> I was on my third viewing of this. I love, I love this one. And I had to stop. Go for it, man. All right. Do you mind if I talk through it too? Is that okay? Yeah, no, no, or... talk through it if you want to. Okay. That wonderful score by Ezra Moreno. You were right, Chucky. These Halloween traditions are so much fun. I'm so glad I get to experience them for the first time. Especially with you. Oh, oh I'm, I'm all too happy to celebrate with you, Chelsea. Uh, why don't we take a picture to commemorate the evening? Uh, Chelsea, uh, it's getting awful late. Uh, why don't we head for home? Oh, Chucky, just one more house, please. Of course. <laughs> what the heck? One more won't be the death of me. <laughs> oh, good. Because there's the house right there. Headphone warning. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the old Grace and Manor. Chelsea, isn't there any other place we could go? It's the only house in town we haven't been to yet. You're not afraid, are you? <laughs> so the compositing work and the backgrounds are all the backgrounds. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear with the thunder and lightning. Oh. <laughs> the, the, the background and the compositing is all because of Lauren Inka Van So oh, the so that nothing about it raining. Uh, yeah, he did. He said around midnight it was supposed to rain cats and dogs. I don't see any cats or dogs. <laughs> it, it's an expression. Whatever. Just tap on the door. <laughs> Well, nobody's there. <laughs> Time to head back. Wait, Chucky, no. Chelsea, I've got a bad feeling about this. Oh, come on. Chelsea. I love you that you put the clock in the back. Yeah. 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 If you say so. This was such a fun cartoon to work on. Good evening. Very funny, Chucky. What? I think you came to me, Chucky Chicken. I know it was you who said... Good evening. Who said that? That was not you. 
Welcome, Alice mortals, to Grace and Manor. And your host, your ghost host. <laughs> Kindly step this way. We seldom have visitors, and there is much to see in this delightfully dilapidated place. Uh, th th thanks anyway. We thought I could go into the home. Ray, there's no turn. Do not be frightened prematurely. You shall not be harmed, but you also shall not leave without a proper tour of our home. Now, let us begin. <laughs> Wonderful! Hello? This is most exciting! Come on, Chucky! <laughs> see, the residents of this ghostly estate have been for centuries, and have been dying for company. <laughs> Chucky, isn't this a place exciting? <laughs> Chucky! I guess you're right. Thanks, Chels. And thank you, Mr. Scary Ghost Man. Not at all, my friend. Would you like a treat, my dear? That, that out of all the ones we've done so far, that is my favorite. And it's it, it was really sad because um, that was Justin Barnes. He was the creator of the Cartoon Guy show. Mm -hmm. And if you look in the portrait gallery, he's actually there. So we we put uh, we put a tribute to him in the portrait gallery, which was very very that's cool. That's yeah, that's a, I'll have to go back and look. Uh, yeah, look at it. But that was the first one where I really was like. I'm proud of all of them, obviously, but that was the one where like the story for me really took off and like mm -hmm. everything was just right on pat. And I do have one story about the mansion itself. Okay. And this is just, th this is why I love the crew that I work with. So um, Laura and Imke van Galen, as I mentioned before, are in the Netherlands. So they, you know, they're this amazing group of artists out there. Mm -hmm. So they came on, this was their first project that they worked with us. Yeah. Um, Imka became our background designer. And so I went to her, okay, I want this to look like the haunted mansion at Disneyland. So I want you to go and I want you to look up reference of the haunted mansion. This is pre COVID by the way. So mm -hmm. go and, and, and look at the haunted mansion at Disneyland and kind of base it off that design. And she goes, okay, a couple of days come by and she, she says, okay, I got your mansion. I'm like, Oh cool. Let me see. And she shows me this design of the mansion, and it doesn't look anything like the haunted mansion in Disneyland. I'm thinking like Southern Antebellum, New Orleans Square style mansion, you know, pillars, columns, you know, the whole thing. Yeah. And this is more like Western, like uh, like Adams Family, kind of like Bates Motel kind of look. And I'm like, are you sure you looked at Disneyland? <laughs> it's like, yeah, I looked at Disneyland. I'm like, could you, could you show me your reference for what you were looking at? Sure enough. Phantom Manor in Disneyland, Paris. 
she looked at the at the Paris haunted mansion <laughs> and based it off based the design off of that and I laughed my butt off and I'm like you know what that's perfect we're going to use that because now it's international appeal because people who yeah. don't know Disneyland or Walt Disney World they know Phantom Manor over in your part of the world so yeah. of course like it's perfect and it fit well with the look and feel the inside is the same like we we got yeah. the wallpaper like like our version of it, like not straight ripped off, but we wanted to have, you know, the stretching room. We wanted to have the portrait gallery, the, you know, the ballroom. Um, you know, we didn't do the graveyard. We had the hat box ghost because uh, obviously he's like the mascot. We had the hitchhikers, Madame Leota, all, ch you know, the characters playing those parts. Yeah. And it just turned out really, really well. I was really proud of that cartoon. It still am. So it's really one of my favorites. It is. It's a great one. It really is. It's 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 very uh it's very fun. Um, and you know, being a Disney fan, it's a nice tribute. Yeah. So, I got out of my system. I I don't have to do another one for another ten years. <laughs> you, you think that, but you'll change yeah. your mind. Probably. Your mind. It'll probably. Uh... <laughs> probably. So I think I think we're going to uh, wrap up. Cool. But I want number uh, before I wrap up. Is there anything we didn't cover that you want to talk about or you wanted to say? You know there is. I just uh, I just want to say uh, thank you to everybody who has donated already and people who are going to donate. Um, and, uh, thank you for having faith in me and my team. And, uh, I just hope to make a really, really great show. That's, I love that. Um, and I want to, you know, number one, thank you for coming on. Thank I wanna you. Thank you for being a creator and creating something that isn't normally found out there right now in these days. Uh, and I hope everyone finds your your youtube page find your kickstarter and donates because this is something we definitely need more of and i want to i want to see more of um so thank you for for doing that thank you for you know like i said our talk was inspiring for me um giving me a little uh kick in the butt to <laughs> to start my stuff up again um yeah, thank, thanks for coming on, man. Well, thank you for having me, man. I, I This has been a lot of fun. I, I'm i very new to the whole, like, can you come on and be on my show and talk about your show thing? So you, I'm very humbled. Like, this has been just a great experience. And you're a great guy. And thank you. I, I'm, I'd like, thank you for having me on. It's been a big honor. I'm really, really blessed to be here. Thank you. It's awesome. Thank you. I love, uh, you know, I don't know what to say to that. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I'm going to drop you backstage. Just hang out a few minutes. Uh, I want to just talk off stage for a little bit. Cool. All right. Bye, guys. <laughs> All right. All right. Everyone, thank you for tuning in. Uh, I really had a lot of fun tonight. And I know, I know I could have talked longer to Mike. I know that, um, honestly, we can probably just bs about animation and cartoons and and just because of how good of a guy he is and his knowledge of i might need to have him back on as a as a guest just to talk animation and not even not even the stuff we're working on just talk about cartoons i think that could be fun um so i'll have to talk with him and maybe schedule that for a later date um just comments real quick uh alex says thanks michael for a great live stream looking forward to the next one thank you Alex, uh, Ted says, this was awesome. I'd love, I want to be on the show. I'm happy to have anybody on. All right. And, uh, Erica says, thanks for the live stream. I'm happy you guys enjoyed it next Tuesday, 8 30 PM Eastern. I'm going to have Bill, uh, Bill mouse and, um, Don chin. Uh, they're going to be talking about their beard Zerker comic, which is a parody on the Keanu Reeves, um, a, a Berserker comic. They do par they're from Parody Press, and I wish I had something to show. Um, what's this? Nope, I do not know where it is. They just did the X Farce Reloaded comic, which I got to work on. Uh, I got three pages in there with my friend uh, Delph and Barrel. So uh, it was a parody, great parody uh, stuff about um, 
uh, on the on like the X Men characters and 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 things. Uh, so I got to do some like uh, the Watcher was like an Elmer Fudd style character and had a lot of fun. I thought I had something close to show, but uh, I guess I don't have it next to me. But anyway, those two. Yes, Don Chin of the Black Belt Hamster Guy. He's an awesome dude. Love Don. Bill is is the artist on Beard Zerker. Bill's awesome. He they, they they work together greatly. So they're both coming on. Um, so 8:30 Tuesday. Thanks again to Michael Cook. And definitely now it's time to go click on his Kickstarter. After you have followed him on all his social media that is scrolling at the bottom. And I will see you guys next week. All right. Have a great uh, night and and have a great day. All right. Bye, guys.